it was a very sad time in our lives. My wife Lizzie, she, she was uh, unable to have babies. She, could, she just could not bear them. I think it, it was a plumbing problem, sort of like trying to connect a piece of three-quarter inch PVC up to a piece of half-inch copper when you don't even have the connector coupling there. I mean, <laughs> hey, it just ain't going to work. And so she was heartbroken. So we thought maybe we could adopt a baby, and we went to the agency of the nice people there, and they had us go to separate rooms for interviews. And the nice young lady talked to me, and she said, Sir, if you, if we adopt, if you were to adopt a baby boy, what hopes would you have for that child? And I said, well, I would hope by the time he's three or four that he would be able to do at least some basic household electrical wiring, 110. But apparently uh, Lizzie didn't interview so well because we never heard from the agency, not even a you-hoo. So, uh, it was a sad, sad time. Well, I was in the kitchen making a sandwich and uh, I had the television on going on in the, in the uh, other room there and I couldn't see it, but I could, I could hear it real good. And it was on one of those uh, pseudo-scientific uh, UFO kind of stations. And then I heard a voice that freaked me out. It was the voice of my dad. It was July 10, 1952. And he was talking about my birthday. Now keep in mind, I haven't heard this voice since November of 69. I was dragging a load of manure over there with a small John Deere tractor over to, to Lizzie's gladiolus. And I heard this explosion. It was like a sonic boom and this what appeared to me to be a meteorite. And I couldn't see him, but there's no question. That was my dad. I come shooting over top of my head. Now listen, I'm not an astrologer, okay? I mean, for all I knew, it might have been a meteorite. It might have just been a big piece of burning rock from outer space. But it comes shooting over my head and it busts a hole right through my barn here. Now, of course, I knew all about that meteorite because uh, that hole had been there in the barn th through my entire boyhood. So I went running in, but there was only just a little bit of smoke. There wasn't a fire, and all the cows are like, they're, look they're looking the same place they're going. Just like that. And I looked too. And I, saw, I seen this, it was a, looked like a can, it looked like a milk can, so a silver canister, except on the top it's got like a waffle iron lid. And then I tell you, I heard something made my blood run red. There was a baby in there. Well, I'm listening to this and I can hardly breathe. But I, I walked over there and I opened up that lid. And I tell you, first thing is the smell was something. I had never heard this part of the story before. Now, this is where it gets a little bit weird. I was gonna lift him out of there, but I didn't even need to because he just he just floated up all by himself. Cute little baby boy in the corroded aluminum diaper there. I hooked him onto the back of the John Deere there and dragged him back to Lizzie. And, well, after we hosed him down, she just fell in love with that little floater and we decided to keep him. Of course, it was a little difficult in the first uh, several years there because of concern about him floating away, but we just tied him to a string most of the time. And put his crib on the ceiling, of course, and put the mattress in there upside down. And at night, we just go, there you go, float up there, little baby, float up. Sleep good now, little baby. <laughs> of course, I did feel bad about the ceiling fan. And then about maybe three years of age, he, he just starts to coming down and he just landed, normal as could be. So here's my dad who died nearly 40 years ago when I was 17 years old. And he's on television telling the whole world that I'm from outer space. 
We named him Thurl Wonder the Third, after myself, and I'm Thurl Wonder the Second. And of course, I'm named after Thurl Wonder the First, who of course was my mother. But Lizzie, she just always called him our little wonder boy. He still thinks he's just a normal little earthling boy. So I'm gonna tell him next summer when he turns 18, because he's got a right to know the truth. And if he don't believe me, well, I got the picture to prove it. Well, he, he never did get to tell me. But I found the pictures. And I began to wonder, could I still fly? <laughs>